Hey, Tristan Parker here. Now today I'm gonna to show you step-by-step step how to create your own fitness or gym website using WordPress. Now we're gonna be using Elementor and I'm gonna show you how to get set up in just a few simple steps. So we're gonna start off by running through how to get your website hosting and your own personal domain name. Guys, you can't have a website without hosting or a domain name, so we're gonna start off with that. And then we're gonna install WordPress onto your website. Next we'll install Elementor which is the page builder that we're going to be using to make the website look awesome. And finally we'll install the theme and start building your website using Elementor. So a few months ago I put together a video on how to create a fitness website and it actually got a pretty good response. But this time I've run through the process step by step making it even easier for you to follow along. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification if you want to be notified of future releases. And I'd really appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up, it really helps other people find my content. So if you're not sure what Elementor is, it's actually a super easy drag and drop page builder packed with functionality and allows you to create professional websites that are fully responsive. And what's even better is you don't even need to know how to code. From defining fonts to changing colors, moving elements around the page using simple click and drag options, adding any images that you like, creating shape dividers, and even making everything look great on a mobile is so simple. So guys, you are really gonna love this, so make sure you stick around and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is find some website hosting. Now I'm here at TSA Host. Now I am not affiliated with these, so by all means go and choose whatever provider that you like, whether it is HostGator or GoDaddy, uh, or SiteGround I think is another one. Whatever it is, they will all supply a similar service. Now I'm using TSA Host because I've used them for a long time, they're very affordable, and they do provide me with great support, so feel free to check them out. What we're gonna do first is head up here and go to web hosting. And then down here you'll see the range of packages that they have available. Now, the most popular one, as you can see, is only $8.99 a month and you get loads of stuff with it, such as 10 hosted websites, you get a gig of memory, you get a standard security certificate included, and all of your storage and stuff is unlimited, which is awesome. Now, you'll probably be all right with the $5.99 package if you are a smaller business and you're just looking to create one, bit, one, sorry, one website, or you could go with the economy, which is what I'm gonna go with today. Now you can choose either a 12 month subscription or you can pay on a monthly basis and the monthly basis is slightly more expensive but if you do choose a 12 month option you do get a domain name included which would be super beneficial for you. So let's just click this one and click buy. All right cool so it's added it to our cart and now all we need to do now is check out. So here it's asking us to log in because I'm currently a user, but what you would do is just click create new account and then you need to run through all of your personal details, your billing details, and then create yourself a login account and just go through the steps. Once you're done, you'll then have access to your hosting panel. Now, once you've logged in, you're gonna have access to your top level control panel. It might look similar depending on what provider that you are using, but in TSA Host, this is how it looks. Now to access our server, tools we need to click on control panel hosting which is our service product here and then we want to hit this login to see panel button now here we are at the tso control panel now if yours doesn't look like this it might be that you have not set it up just yet so just run through the setup step by step if you do have any problems just contact the support team by raising a ticket or using their live chat option and they'll be able to assist you like i say they are really good at their support now from here you'll see that we have our domain name and hopefully you've set that up as well. Now what we need to do next is access our server control panel by clicking cPanel admin. Okay, great. So this is our server control panel and this control panel will probably look similar no matter what hosting provider that you are using. They are pretty common amongst each of the providers. So just to give you a rundown of what is available here, if, for example, you wanted to create yourself a professional email address, you can do so by adding mailboxes using this option here. So this will create an email address attached to your domain name. So if for example, you wanted a professional email that said info at yourbusiness.com, then you would do that here. Now, if you need some more information on how to create a professional email address, I do have a video on my channel. So I'll link to that in the description and make sure you go and check that out. Something else that's quite important is knowing how to create FTP accounts. So if you needed to provide access to your website to a external third party, you know, for example, a web developer, then you would create an FTP account and send the information over to them. 
Moving down a little bit further, we've got PHP version. Now this is not something that you'll need to change very often, but you need to make sure that the right PHP version is running on your server. Now at the point of this video, I think the version that we are using at the moment is 7.3. Make sure that the up-to-date version is working because it's gonna make sure that the website and all of the WordPress plugins are working properly as well. Now, the main part that we need to address here is under web applications, and we want to install the application called WordPress. So let's just click that. And I'll give you an overview of what WordPress is, but essentially it's the CMS or the content management system that we're gonna be using today. And it's incredibly popular. So take a look at that if you want to, but for now, we're just gonna click install this application. And it's gonna ask you what domain name that you'd like to put it on. So I'd recommend just leaving it as it is. You can choose the version that you want installing. We've only got 5.4.2 here, which is recommended, so leave that. I'd also recommend that you just go through and, and leave all of the options as default, but by all means change them if you like. Now, the important thing to address here is your administrator username and your password. So this is gonna be the username and password that you use to access your WordPress account. So essentially you need to remember this in order to access your website. So if I just go with something like just him and then I'm just going to create a password in here so just note do write this information down because you are going to need it again now administrator email this could be your email address like say so. you want to give your blog or website a title and you can change the tagline if you want. I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Again, leave everything as default and then we're just gonna click this install button here. Now this shouldn't take very long, maybe a few minutes. I'm just gonna speed the video up to save time. Okay, awesome. That literally took around eight seconds, so not very much time at all. So it's really, really quick. Now, now this is installed, we have a couple of options here. We can either visit our website by clicking this link or we can log into our WordPress control panel. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's click this one here. Okay, so this is our login control panel. Now, the details that we just wrote down to create the WordPress account, hopefully you made a note of those because we're going to need those right now. So let's log in with using that information. Awesome. So this is our dashboard. And you're going to become pretty familiar with this because it's the screen that you see every time you log into your WordPress website. Now, there's not really a lot to talk about here. The panels will change depending on the type of site that you have, what type of plugins that you're using. So if, for example, you have um, some SEO options in there, you might find that here. Or if you had an online store, you might have some store data here as well. But feel free to go in and have a look. You can collapse panels, you can move them around and customize this as much as you like. So let's get started just by quickly giving you an overview of some of the options they are gonna be really important for you and it's really important that you understand them and understand how they work and how you can make changes to your website. So the first thing I want you to do is head over to users and then click all users. So this is where you would add additional users to your website if you wanted to create a login account for them. And we can just hit this add new button here and all you need to do is fill in a username for them and essentially the required fields at the very least and then you would create them a password. Here the important area is defining a role. Now, subscriber is the most bottom low level role that's available and administrator is the top level. So depending on the user's role within your company will depend on what sort of role that you supply to them. Once we're happy here, let's just hit, once you're happy with the information, you would just click add new user and it's gonna grant them with a login. Now next I want you to head over to your profile. And here it holds all of the information about our individual profile. So we can scroll down and add a first name and a last name. You can change your nickname. You can change the display name of your account. You can change your email address, uh, website, etc., etc. Now, if you ever want to change your password on your account, this is where you'll come to do it. It's under account management and you can just generate a new password or you can put in a password, but it, you have to make sure that it is strong enough. Now, one final thing here is you can actually change the style of the dashboard interface. You can change the color, which is quite nice. It gives you a little bit of uh, flexibility and customization. So just have a little flick around to find a color that you like. Maybe you do prefer the default one. 
but I quite like midnight, so I'm just gonna go with that for now. And once we're happy, we're just gonna go down and click update profile. Cool, that's up to date. Now, next, we are gonna head over to plugins. And this will be where all of your website plugins will live. Now, if you're not sure what plugins are, essentially they are extending the functionality of your WordPress website. So if you just wanted to plug extra functionality in like a online store or some SEO, for example, then you would do that here. You just need to think about your mobile phone, for example, as a standard handset, it doesn't really do a lot, but you download apps to extend the functionality of it. And that's exactly what plugins do. Now, to add a plugin, we're gonna go up to add new. And just to give you a feel for what's available, I'm just gonna click popular, and it will just give you a list of the most popular installed plugins. So here we've got contact form seven, which will give you contact form functionality. So if you wanted people to contact you via your website, you could use this plugin. Yoast SEO is an SEO plugin, which is incredibly popular. You can see that it's got over 5 million active installs. If you wanted to use uh, WooCommerce, then that allows you to sell products online. So again, that is incredibly popular, over 5 million installs. And just have a little browse through and you'd be able to see what is available. Now there are a couple of plugins that we need to install right now. So we're just gonna run through those. And if you head up to search plugins up on the top right, we're just gonna put in Elementor. Cool, and it's this one that we want here. So we're just gonna hit install now. Awesome, once it's installed, hit that activate button. Awesome, so this tells us that Elementor is installed. Now, we don't need to look at this right now, so I'm just gonna click this X, and it's gonna take us back to our dashboard. Now, we've got a few more plugins that we need to install, so let's just head back to plugins, and we can click add new. Great, again, head up to the list, cool. Now, this time, we're gonna search for something called Envate. And this is the one that we want, so again, we're gonna hit install now, and activate. Excellent, so that one's installed. Next, we're gonna add another one. This time, we are gonna search for Astra. And we're gonna install that one. Awesome. Now there is one more plugin that we need to install, so head to add new. And this plugin is really important because it's a security plugin and it's gonna keep your website secure against breaches and hackers. So it's really important that you have some form of security on your website. Unfortunately, WordPress is pretty prone to being hacked because it is so popular. So we need to make sure that we have some form of security on there. So I want you to search for WordFence. And it's this one here, WordFence Security Firewall and Malware Scan. So again, you can tell it's really popular. It's got over 3 million active installs. So we're just gonna click that one now, install it. And then once it's installed, we are going to activate it. Awesome, so WordFence is installed and you will be granted with this window. So you need to put in an email address for WordFence to send you alerts when anything goes wrong with your website. So make sure that you're putting in an email address that you can be contacted on. Now you have the option to choose whether you wanna join their mailing list. Often I click no, it's totally up to you and you need to check this box here and then click continue. It's gonna ask you if you wanna to upgrade to premium. Now they do a pretty good job of giving you high level security without the premium license. You might find that if you ever have a breach, for example, you might need to install premium. But again, I'll leave that up to you. Today I'm just gonna click no thanks. Awesome, so that is all the plugins that we need to install on our site today. Next, I want you to head back over to settings and we're gonna go down to permalinks. And this is the final bit that I need to run through before we actually start making the website. Now it's really important that you have your link structure in a readable way. Now what I mean by this is, for example, currently we have the plain option checked. Now this is what our URL would look like when creating a page. Now, I don't know what that means, and I'm sure you don't either. And many people visiting your site won't know where they're at through looking at the URL. Also, it's not very good for search engines, so we wanna choose something that's a lot more readable. And we can just head down here and click post name. And this will be enough to tell us what page we're on, and it's gonna be a much more readable way for everyone visiting and search engines as well. And once we've got post name selected, you need to head down and click save changes. Now we can actually get into the fun part and actually start putting our website together. So let's head up to pages. So this is where all of our website pages are going to live. And you can see that there are a couple here already. Now, privacy policy, 
we might want to keep there. Sample page, we are just going to delete. So we can either check it and hit the drop down and go move to trash, or you can just hover and click trash. And that's going to delete that one. If there's any other pages that you need to delete in the future, that's how you do it. Now, I've noticed that we've got quite a few notifications here. So what you might want to do is just close some of these. I'm going to click no thanks. And I'm just going to dismiss that one. So let's start adding our website pages. So we need to head up to our add new button and just click that. And hit, this is where we place our page name. So first of all, I'm going to start with home page. And we're just going to call it home. And then we're going to just hit publish up on the top right. And then click it again. Now don't worry, this isn't how our website's going to look because we're going to move on to that a little bit later. But at the moment, we're just adding pages. Head up to the top left and click new pages. And we're just going to click add new. Cool, this time let's go with services. Click publish. Next, we're just gonna go with about us and this will be all the information about your fitness website or your gym, for example, and click publish. Cool, and we're gonna repeat this process again one final time and finally we're just going to put in contact and depending on the type of website you're building for example at the moment we're doing a fitness website so it will be either contacting the personal trainer or contacting your gym and we're just going to click publish all right there we go that is Right, there we go. So that is all of our pages added for now. I'm just going to head back to our dashboard. Now, if you want to see how our website is currently looking, we can head up to this option here and just click visit site. This is currently how our website's looking. So it's not very pretty at the moment. There's not really much uh, to look at, but we're going to start fixing that now. So the first thing that we need to do is change the theme that is being used on this website. So let's head back up to our website name and then click dashboard. And from here, we're going to go down to appearance and then themes. Okay, so these are all the themes that we have available. And you can see that this is our currently active theme. Now we want to add a new theme. So we're going to head up to add new. Awesome. So there are by default, loads of free themes available with WordPress. And they are all okay. But personally, they are pretty basic. They are free. There are loads of paid theme options available if you wanted something a little bit more premium but for today we're going to be using a free theme and then we're just going to build up on it so the theme that we need to use is called Astra so I need to head up to search and just put in Astra and it's this one here with the purple background and we're just going to click install that one once it's installed let's just activate it Cool, now let's head back and see how our site's looking. Great, so visually you can see now it is completely different, but also it's not quite where we want it to be. So let's start building upon this now. Now the first thing I wanna show you guys is how you go about changing your navigation. So here we have about contact home and services and ideally we don't want it to be in that order. We want homepage to come first. So we're gonna head back over to our site and head to the dashboard. And again, we're going to go down to appearance and this time we're going to go to menus. Now this is where you go to build any website navigation for your website. Now the first thing we need to do is give our menu a name. So I'm going to go with main menu and then click create menu. Great. Once that's created, you'll see on the left hand side that we have a couple of panels. We've got our pages and you can see the pages that we've just created or we've got posts. So if you had a blog, for example, you would add posts from here and you can use custom links. So if you ever needed to link off to something external, you could create a custom link here. Now let's head back to pages and I'm just going to check all of the ones that we want to add. In this case, it's all of them and then click add to menu. Great, and that's going to throw all of our pages within our navigation menu. 
Now, the really cool thing with this is if we want to change the order, we can literally click and drag the order that we want the pages to appear in. So I'm going to have home page first. And I'm going to put contact at the bottom. But let's say, for example, you wanted to add a secondary level to your navigation. So do you know when you hover over a menu item in a nav and you have a drop down of further options? We can achieve this just by clicking an option and then dragging it to the side and you'll see that it starts creating sub items. So really, really clever and really easy to manage your website navigations. So once we're happy with our nav, we are just gonna have to click a display location. So here we just wanna have it as our primary menu. So that's the menu that's gonna appear at the top of the website. And then once we're happy, let's just click save. Great, and we're just gonna go see how that looks now. Awesome, so now you can see that the positions of our navigation items have changed. So they are now in order that we want them to be in. So that is done. Now that you have an understanding of how WordPress works and how you can set your own website up, let's move on to the fun stuff. Now we're gonna actually create our fitness-based website. So it doesn't look very good at the moment. So this is now where we're gonna start improving that. So what we wanna do is head back to our dashboard. And then from here, we're just gonna to head to pages. And we wanna start with our home page. Cool, so from here, we wanna hit this big red button that says edit with Elemental. So here we go guys, this is Elemental, and Elemental is a page builder that we're using to build the pages on our website. Now, it is an awesome drag and drop editor. Let me just quickly show you how it works. So here on the left hand side, we have a ton of elements, otherwise known as widgets, and we can literally click and drag that over into our canvas and you'll see that things start adding. We can click inside, you can edit the text, and there's, there's just loads of options here and I'm gonna run through those in a little bit more detail shortly. Now, let's just delete this by clicking the X. Now looking at these options that we have here, I want you to click the plus. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow you to select the structure. Now the structure works on a box model, which means that everything is inside boxes. You know, boxes inside boxes inside boxes. It's layered up with boxes. I said, I said boxes a lot there, so I apologize for that, but hopefully you get the point. So each box can have a column width defined to it. So here we've got a full column, which is gonna span the width of the page, and then you can split that in half, and you can have three columns, etc., etc. So let's just click a full column option here. Now, you can see that I have a navigator here, and if you can't see that, you can either come down here and click navigator, and it's gonna show you the panel, so you can see that it's hidden and they are back. Now, you can see inside here, we just have a section. And inside the section, there is a column. So you can see that everything starts becoming nested. Now, if we head back up to our grid, you will return to the widgets. So what you wanna do now is, we could add a heading in here. And we are just gonna create an example of like a hero section here. So here is our heading title. And we are just gonna put how to create a fitness website. So you can see that it doesn't look great, but we can change this. And if we head over to style, it's gonna give us a ton of style options for this individual title text. Now we can change the color to anything that you like. So we go with something like red for now. And you also have a ton of typography options. So if you wanted to change the font, you can just click font family and you can choose any font that you want. There are loads in here. So if I just search for Oswald, you can see that the font has changed. You can change the weight, the transformation if you want it uppercase. You can make it italic if you wanted to. You can change the line height, which is essentially the, the height spacing between lines of text. And you can also increase the letter spacing. So lots of options available here, which is why Elementor is really quite powerful. So we are gonna create a quick hero section here. So the first thing I wanna do is add an image to the background of this section. So we need to do this on the section rather than the column. Now we can select a section within our navigator, or you can just hover over it, wait for the blue bar to appear and just click these six dots. Now from here, you're gonna get another ton of options just for this individual section. And what we wanna do is just go down to height and I wanna, I'm gonna say fit to screen. 
So you can see now this container is the height of the screen, which is cool. And, and automatically it's placed our content in the center, which is also really useful for balance. Now from while this is still selected, I'm gonna head over to style and we're gonna add a background to this. Now again, you've got a couple of options here. We can go for a fixed color background if you wanted to, like so, maybe you'd want it black for example, or if you're not wanting that, you can add an image. Now what's popped up here is our media library and currently it is empty, but we can easily add files to this by either selecting files or you can simply just click and drag and drop images like so, and that's gonna to upload to our library. Cool, so once this has uploaded and it's good to go, there's a couple of options that you might wanna be aware of here. You can add a title, but more importantly, you can add alt text. Now I recommend that you add alt text because it's really good for SEO and it allows the search engines to read the content of the image. So you could just put something like uh, trainer climbing rope, something that relates to the image. And we're just gonna hit insert and it's gonna insert our image. So awesome, you can see that it's added it really nice and easily to our background section. Now from here there we have a few options to change the, the positioning if you wanted it in the center, for example. I mean, that's not overly flattering. So I'm just gonna go with, let's go with top center, leave it like that for now. And you can change the size of this to be cover. And that's gonna fit, make sure the image fits the entire width or the height of the section that it's in the background of. Now on top of this, you have, an, you have a couple of additional options. We can add a background overlay, which is super useful if you wanted to bring the text out that's overlaid on top of the image. And we have a couple of options here to add a color, or we can add a gradient if we wish. So for now, let's just add color. And we're gonna go with black. Oh. Like so, you can see that the image has become slightly darker and we can change the opacity like so. So that looks cool. Next, we're just gonna work on this text a little bit more. We could, you know, center align it. We can go back to style, we can make it larger. Like so, adjust the line height if you wanted to bring it closer together. So you can see there are tons of options. Now while we are working on a simple hero section here, I'm just gonna head back up to section, select the six dots, and we're gonna go back to background. And I wanna let you know that you can add different background types here. So we've going, we're going with a classic at the moment, but if you wanted to, you could add a gradient, or you can even add a video. What's even better, you can add a slideshow, so if you wanted a carousel running in the background of your hero section, you absolutely can do. So there's so much functionality here, it's awesome. And what's even better is this is actually completely free. So we're not using the Elemental Pro version, we are just using the basic Elemental version that's available and just utilizing um, plugins and themes that are allowing us to create awesome websites for free. So let's move on a little bit further and I wanna come down and we're gonna add another content block. This time we're gonna go with three columns. Now let me just show you a few of these widgets that are available. Now, one thing to mention is, I've just mentioned that we are not using the Pro version and there are a ton more widgets available if you do upgrade to Pro. Now, I do absolutely recommend that you do upgrade to Pro because Elemental is incredible and it just offers so much more. But for this exercise, we are just running with the free one, so I'm just gonna minimize this. So we've got a few options here. Now, here is what we call an image box. And we're just gonna click and drag that in here which is really nice. And we can add an image of our choice. Again, I'm just gonna go with this one. And we can change the heading to rope climbing. I mean, you get it. You can change the content of the text here and it's gonna amend what we have here. If you wanted to add a link to this block, you can do. You can put in a URL or if you wanted to link to another page within the website you just start typing that page name and and click it in it's going to start linking to it so again really really easy to manage now let's head up to style here now every time you select an individual widget you're going to be granted with a ton of different style options because there's so much flexibility with this so we can increase the space in between the image and the title or if you want to increase the width of the image you can there's just there's there's so much here so that is essentially the image box option. Now let's move on and just 
let's just see what else is here. So if you wanted to add a video, you could just quickly like you could drag that in, and you can link off to YouTube if you want to. So that's really super useful. Another one that's really good is if you have buttons around your site, you can just click and drag them in, which again is great. And one thing that is also really good with Elementor is the st styling options and how we can replicate them to create site consistency. So let me show you what I mean by this. So here we're gonna style the button and I wanna change the color. The text color will be white and let's just change the color to red for now. I'm going to add 100% border radius on it just to show you how this looks. Now, if you want to add hover options, we can do that. Maybe the hover option is black, so if we hover over it, it changes color. Now, that's great, but if, for example, you wanted to add another button, it looks like this default style. So, depending on how you have your default style, you might want it to look a little bit different, or you might want it to look like other buttons that you have around your site. So what we can do is just copy that and we can paste the style, which is so cool. And also on top of that, if you wanted to copy this button, you can actually paste it underneath other, other elements. So we could paste that one there and then we could, under content, just center align it like so. So now it looks like this button is in relation to this image card, which is awesome. But let's see what else we've got. Another thing that's really useful is our accordion. I'm just going to dump that in there. Now these are what are called collapsible panels. So you can add as many as you like here. So we can have like accordion three and you can see that it's going to start layering them up. And again, we have a ton of style options here. So hopefully this is showing you the capabilities of Elementor. Now one thing you might notice is all of this content is looking a little bit close to this container. So if you wanted to add margin and spacing, padding let's say, you want to select the section that you want to apply it to, click those six dots, and then we want to head up here and go to advanced. So you'll see that you have a couple of margin and padding options. Now if I just click inside there and just hit the arrow up, you'll see that there is margin being applied to the top, and it will also be being applied to the bottom which is useful. And again, if you wanted to add padding, you can do so like so. So just one thing to note is padding is gonna apply spacing between, uh, sorry, padding is gonna apply spacing on the inside of your section and margin is gonna apply it to the outside. So feel free to have a play with that. Now, if for example, we wanted to duplicate this entire section, we can do that by hitting duplicate, like so. And if you have any elements that you want to start moving around, you can click the element pencil and you can move it over to another section. Or if you wanted to move the entire column, you can click and drag it like so. So guys, this is super flexible. And if there's anything that you don't want on your page, it is really easy to remove it. We just have to right click it and you click delete or if you don't want the entire section, you can just delete it. So hopefully now, guys, you have a pretty good understanding of how this drag and drop page builder works, and I do recommend that you go in and have a little play around. But for now, we are just gonna delete everything that we've done so far. And we are gonna produce our homepage. Now, one of the plugins I asked you to install was Inveto Elements, and that has given us this little leaf option here. So what we wanna do is we are gonna utilize a pre-made theme that is available to us for free so we can completely speed up the process here. So let's hit this leaf icon now. And we wanna to head to free kits. Now there are a ton of free kits here depending on what website that you wanna create. Now I am producing a fitness-based website for you guys today. So we are just gonna come up here and we're just gonna search fitness. So cool, so you can see that we've got a couple of options here. It's showing us 10 template kits, which is quite a nice lot to choose from, to be fair. Now, the one that we're gonna be using is this one. And you can either click to preview it, or you can just install the kit. So we're gonna do that now. What we just need to do is wait for that to load, and it's done. So now let's just hit the view kit. Cool, and within this kit, we've got a ton of pages that we can just chuck into our website. 
Now, what's awesome is we can put these in and then we can edit them. So let's just go and choose our home page, and I'm going to go with this one. It does take a few seconds to install, so I'm just going to cut the video and we'll continue once it's done. So there you go guys, that actually took a few more minutes than I thought. My internet connection is pretty slow at the moment, but hopefully it didn't take too long for you guys. So you can see that it's imported a fully working website, which looked awesome, and everything is made up of elemental components that we have just run through. So we have the option to edit all of this content, we can delete it if we want to, etc, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start with the top here and we're just going to start working through changing how this hero section looks. Um, I have an idea in my mind and we're just going to run through it. So first of all I want to get rid of this background image of course because it's not I'm not really feeling it. So we can just hit six dots, head to style and you'll see that it has an image in here and we can just click choose image and here we are at our media library and we just want to drag some more images in so let's start with this one now guys if you are not sure on where to go to get images you can use free stock libraries now I do have a video on the five best free stock libraries available so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to go and check that out but they are li libraries of awesome images it's actually where I've got the images that I'm going to be using today I've used a website called Pix Pexels so go and check that video out it could be super beneficial for you now let's just input this one and again I'm going to give it a alt text battle ropes insert media and cool, it's already changed it nice and easily. Now, you wanna change the position of this. I'm gonna go center, center, just to make sure that it is incredibly central. We're gonna leave the size to cover. Now, one thing I do wanna take a look at is the background overlay. And this has a black background overlay. And we are just gonna lower the opacity. And it also has a blend mode on it. Now. By all means go through and change these blend modes and you'll see that it starts changing the image so like saturation has changed there or color hasn't done anything or you can just hit normal but I do quite like the overlay option it sort of adds a, a nice bit of contrast to the image and we can just lower the opacity on that ever so slightly like so so cool I'm happy with that now let's move on to the text in the actual hero section now what I want to do here is actually I'm going to split this up so I'm going to edit the first line here and I'm going to put how to make a and I'm going to leave it like that we need to delete this section above so we're going to hover over that right click it and hit delete now I want to work with this line of text again so I'm just going to duplicate it and from here I'm just going to put fitness website Cool, so you might be wondering why I've done that. And let me show you. So I'm happy with this line of text, but I want this one to be much larger. So I'm just gonna style this line. So we're gonna head up the style, typography, and I want it to be much larger. Uh, something like this. Now you notice that the text is coming outside of the box, and that is because it has a fixed line height on it. Now I recommend you use M, and probably stick that to around, 1.2 would probably be a good good working point. If it's body text, 1.4 usually works a little bit better. And I'm just gonna leave the website spacing as it is because I'm, I'm happy with that. And one thing I wanna do here is change the color to a nice, almost like a deep, deep red, there we go. And once we have our color defined, we can just hit this plus option here and it's gonna add it to our palette. So if we need to use that color again, it's so useful. Now, that's looking cool. Now, the next thing I wanna do is add a couple of buttons to this. So we need to go back over to our widgets and we are gonna add a button. And this is our default state of the button. Now, one thing that's gonna be really beneficial to you guys is knowing how to change the style of the button. So each time we drag it in, it's in the style that we want it to be in. And what we need to do here is first of all, let's update our page. Now, if we head down here, it's gonna update the content in our page, like so. And then from here, we're gonna head up to our hamburger menu on the top left, and we wanna go to theme style. 
Cool, so this is global theme styles for our elemental templates. You can go in and you can define your typography, you can define your body content, your heading one down to heading six, so you can choose the color to each heading that you drag in. So really quite useful. So body text for now, I'm just gonna change it to like a dark gray. And a typography, well, just, let's just leave it as default. You can change colors of links. So here I'm gonna use the red, like so. And yeah, by all means go through and have a play. Now, once I'm happy with typography, the main section I wanna look at here is buttons. So we're gonna have the same typography options that we have everywhere else. I want the font size to be 14 pixels and I want the weight to be bold, like so. And actually, I'm gonna have all of the button text to uppercase. And I am happy with that. So now the typography is okay. I don't need any text shadow, but actually now let's change the color of the button. So we're gonna have to change our text color here because currently it's red and I want that to be white. But actually I want the background color of the button to be red, like so. It currently has a border radius. So the border radius is the edging if you're not sure on what that is. And I want it to be zero. So now you can see that it's a straight edge. And if I up on the keyboard, you'll see that the button on the screen is becoming more round. So I want our buttons to be sharp today. You can change the padding. So the padding is gonna be the spacing inside the button. I wanna go with 15 pixels. Now actually I want more spacing on the left than the right than I do on the top and the bottom. So let's unlink those. This chain is gonna unlink the values. So now I can make this value 25, let's say, and that one 25, like so. And you can see that the spacing on the ends of the buttons. Uh, it's a lot more readable. It looks more like a button. So I am happy with that. Now, before we move on guys, we need to apply a hover state to our button. Now buttons need hover states because it shows that when you hover over it, there is an interaction. So you'll see that we have the option here to add a hover state. So let's do that now. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make the button dark gray. So if I apply that color there, you'll see that now the button is dark gray. And there we go, that's as simple as it is to make a default button within Elementor. So let's update our settings now. Head down to update. And we're just gonna head to the top and click close. And this is gonna bring us back to our editor. Like so. So what we've done here guys is, not so long ago when we dragged this button widget in, it was present, we were presented with a green button. Now when we drag it in, you'll see that we now have the button in the style that we want it to be in. So it's gonna be a lot easier for you dragging buttons in in the future. So for now, I'm just gonna delete that. And this button, if we go to style, you can further change how this looks. So one thing that's pretty cool is we have some additional hover options. So for this button, I want it to grow when you hover, like so. You can see that it's increasing ever so slightly. So that's really cool and you can see how easy it is to do that. Now, let's start making this button make sense. So head up to content and here where it says click here, we wanna give it a name. So let's go with our services, like so. And you can add a link here to services. You can change the alignment. So if you wanted it in the middle of the page, you can do, or if you want it justified to full width, again, you can do. So for now, we're just gonna plonk it in the center. Now also what you can do is you can add icons to these, which is awesome. So let's say we wanted to add a right arrow. And I'm just gonna go with hand, why not? So that can be positioned over on the left or you can position it over on the right just by changing the icon position. And you can also change the spacing. So again, guys, super, super cool stuff. Now that we have our button, what I wanna do is I wanna create another one. So I'm gonna duplicate this. Great. And by default, it's stacked them because they work on a full width box. So remember the box model we were talking about? These are working full width, and we just need to swap these to be inline elements so they sit side by side. So we can easily do this by clicking the pencil and then heading up to our advanced tab. And here this time we're gonna go down to positioning. 
Now here we have a width option and we're just going to go with inline and you'll see that it's now placed it over to the left and it is inline. Now in order to apply the same styles to this one, remember we can copy this and we can just click paste style like so and it looks awesome. They are side by side. Now they're not perfect so let's just tidy those up. I want to add some spacing between them so we can go back to advanced and we're just going to add some margin. Uh, 8 pixels is absolutely fine. Again I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste the style for consistency. Now we want these buttons to be in the middle here, we don't want them over to the left so we actually need to apply some settings to our column. So in order to activate and edit a column we need to hover over to the edge and you'll see this column icon. So click that and we'll be granted with some layout options. So we need to change our horizontal alignment to center and that's going to chuck all of our content into the middle just as we want it. So as you can see that is looking great. Now finally before we finish up here let's just change this button so it makes sense and we're going to go with contact us. Again here you could change this to contact like so and we want to get rid of the icon we don't need it in this time and we also want to get rid of the icon spacing because you'll notice that there's additional spacing on the right hand side of this button so we can place that to zero. Now I want this button to be a slightly different color so we're going to head up to style under normal we're going to get a background color and we're going to choose it to be white and let's just go with red text like so so you can see that there's some form of separation now to make this look a little bit tidier i just want to add some spacing in between the text and the button so what we can do is we can select our title that we have here and head back over to advanced and I want to add some margin. Now, if I add margin at the moment while this is selected, it's going to chain all the values on the top, right, bottom and left, but we only want to apply it to the bottom. So we need to uncheck them. Like so. So that's already looking awesome. I'm happy with that. And one final thing is I want to increase the height of this. So I'm going to go with selecting that, the six dots on the container and I need to go to layout and here we have a minimum height option that's currently existing and that's currently at 906 pixels. Now if we click BH that is going to apply a percentage height of our entire view height. So view height is our window height. So if I assign that to 100% you'll see that it's going to take it slightly off screen. Now this is the height of our window but also it's accommodating our heading section here our navigation so you need to take that into consideration so we could just place that at like I don't know 95% seems like a pretty good value so you can see that there's uh, an option to scroll down and there's more content but it adds more real estate which looks a lot nicer visually and it inter tells people that they can scroll down so that's essentially it with the hero section that's looking awesome let's just quickly go through and change a few more elements here so We've got body shaping, body shaping, body shaping. So we can change these to things like weights, cardio, community, or, or something like that. Now, these images obviously don't make sense, so we need to change these. So we can click on the image item and we can choose our image here. Now again we need to add a few more images. So you can click and drag multiple images in if you wish and we just need to wait for those to upload. Now that our images are in we are going to select one that represents our weight so I'm going to go with this one. Insert media and again we're just going to repeat this process. So which one was that? This one was cardio so let's go with that one and then community and that one looks fine cool so we've got our images in we have this line separate here now you can either keep these but I think for now I'm just gonna delete them like so moving down we've got this section here now there's some white text here which 
I don't really I don't really like so I'm just gonna remove this entire column and we're gonna keep welcome now if you want to edit any of these again just click into them like so here we've got a paragraph and you can see that there's there, there is color applied to this but if you delete it it's fine and if you type back in it's, it's gonna be black so yeah there's just um, color applied to the text which once you change this to your own content it's not gonna matter anyway now I'm gonna delete this as well this little signature like so I'm just gonna leave this in here at the moment but guys honestly make sure you change the content otherwise it's not gonna make sense so I want to change this image so I'm gonna similar to what we did with the hero section we're gonna click the section to edit it go to style and we're gonna swap our image out and let's go with this one like so so that looks cool but now we can't read our text so we need to select our text and we just need to change the style of this by going to style text edit similar process for our body content make that white and for simplicity we're just going to copy that and paste style like say now if you're still not happy with how this is reading remember we can click on our section and we can get a background overlay and we can add a color so if you want to add black like so by default the opacity is at 50 percent and you can make this as strong or as weak as you like so i'm going to keep it at 50 i'm going to get a 40 percent like so it really is coming together again there is white text here i'm going to delete this and then you might want to position this in the center so click the text under content you'll have an alignment option like so again a very similar thing to elements underneath we can right click and delete the spacer we can place everything in this in the middle so here we have a text editor so we need to go to style and align that to the to the middle and again we've got two columns here I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to center align this but what you might want to do guys is just head over here and just chuck some headings in like so and then you can style them however you like but for now I'm just going to delete that I'm going to leave this images in to just create simplicity but what I'm going to do now is I don't want this one so I'm actually going to delete it but instead I want to place something in the middle here so let's just click add now what is also really cool with these invaded elements is not only do we get a bunch of pages that we can install and just start working from, we can also add sections. So click the leaf and go to free blocks. And there are loads of options here so by all means go through and have a look but essentially whichever one you select will give you a predefined layout that you can just place into your website and there are loads of different styles here that might be relevant to the theme that you're producing or you can just find the closest representation and just amend them so what i'm looking for is something like a call to action that would be great cool so there are loads here this one's standing out so we're just going to insert this for the moment and there we go already it's in place it's styled it looks great now let's start off just by deleting that it's Laura Mipson it's body text and we can change this to book a class for example now one thing you notice is it has a button here now, we can just delete this and what we want to do is we want to drag one of our nice buttons in here and we can just center align this and let's just say contact us or you can label it whatever you like. So this is looking cool. We can amend the height of this if we want to. Currently the minimum height is 30% of the view height and we might wanna take that down to say 20. Also within here, we might wanna change the color of the background. So at the moment, it's using a blue overlay. Now you might wanna change that to say red or you might want it to be black, but let's change it to a nice dark red. I think that looks nice, like so. Now scrolling down, you'll see that it has a gallery in here. So if we click that, it has nine selected images. So if you're looking to form a gallery, this would be where you would do it. 
and we also have a Google map in here and we can click and edit the map so you'll notice that our navigator is in the way so we can just either move it out of the way or what you can do is pin it to the side of the screen which is really useful and then you can see that how our site is being layered up and everything is in its individual sections everything at the moment is saying section but if for example you wanted to edit it we can just double click it and what is this our best so that and we know now that this is relevant to this section and now we are on the other section underneath and you can label that to our best icons for example so there are loads of flexibility with the layers panel and the elements within Elementor. Now, now that we can access our map, I just want to show you, you can change the location if you want. So I'm actually based in Exeter, so let's just put that in for now. But what you would do is put your gym location in there or wherever your training facilities are you would just place the address within here and Google will find it. So really quite nice and beneficial. It's never been so easy to add a Google map to your website than it is with Elementor. And you've got options on how, how much you wanna be zoomed in and out of the map by default. And we can change the height of it as well. So yeah, it's really cool. Now here at the bottom, we've got opening hours and things like that. So for now, I'm just gonna delete these because I don't want them. And there we have it. So this is how our home page is looking so as you can see it is looking pretty good now before we move on I just want to quickly touch on the whole responsive side of the website now responsive design means that the website looks great on not only desktop but also mobile phones and tablets and responsive design has become so popular over the last few years it's almost it's almost required to implement it into every website because actually more people are visiting sites on mobiles these days than they are desktops so we can easily manage this through Elementor by coming down to here and we can click responsive mode and we can see what our website looks like in tablet form and mobile. So let's just for now just click mobile. If we scroll to the top, you can see just by scrolling up that everything is actually positioned quite nicely. This button is positioned a little bit weirdly off to the right and this is because there is margin and padding on this container. Now we can amend this by clicking edit column go into advanced and we can just put zero in padding like so and it's going to amend that and it becomes a lot more central and a lot easier within the flow now my main concern here is our hero section now this is huge and we need to change that so we can do that really easily we're just going to click and edit this piece of text and we're going to head back over to styles and we need to change our typography because we need to change the size of it. But one thing you'll notice is we are in mobile view and we are now presented with this mobile, which means that any changes that we make to our content in this view, it's only going to take place on the device that we are working with. So we have placed this as 35 pixels on a mobile, but it's not gonna be 35 pixels on a desktop, which is awesome. Now next, we're gonna click the second one, the second line of text. Again, we're gonna to go to style, typography, and we are just gonna make that one slightly bigger like so. So there you go, already it looks visually much better than it did just a second ago. And honestly, go in and have a play and just find things that are right for you and make as many changes as you like. So there we go, that is our homepage done. Now that we're done with our homepage, what we can do is click this update button here. And that is just going to save our home page. Awesome. Now, a couple of additional options is if we t click this arrow, we can save anything as a draft. So if you've made changes and you're not quite happy to put them live yet, then you can just save it as a draft. Alternatively, you can save it as a template. Now, what this allows you to do is produce a page, save it as a template, and then if you create another page further down the line and you want to pull that template in that you've used somewhere else, it will save it as a template in the library and you can call upon it at any point. So really useful if you've got quite a few custom pages that you're working with and you wanna use them again. But for now, what I wanna do is I wanna just preview how this is looking. So hit the I and wait for it to load. And there we go. Here is our fitness website. So as you can see, it's literally taken us no time at all to put this together. 
and it looks awesome. And what's better is it looks better on other devices. Now what we need to do now is create the designs for our other pages. Let's head to about, and we're gonna use a very similar process here. Rather than going back to dashboard, we can head up here and click edit page. Cool, like so. Now remember from here, we are just gonna hit edit with Elemental and that's gonna take us back to our page builder. All right, awesome. So we are given a blank canvas. Now for simplicity and to speed the whole process up, again, we're gonna go with our free kits, load our free kit, and we're just gonna choose one that represents an about page. Cool, so let's go with this. We're just gonna insert the template like so and wait for it to load. It might take a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna pause the video and I'll continue once it has finished. Okay, awesome, so that's installed. It only took a couple of minutes this time. Maybe the internet connection is finally playing ball. I don't like this section here, so I'm actually just gonna delete it because it's easy to do so. Now everything in here is changeable like we have changed with our homepage. Maybe you wanna delete these columns, for example, and change that to what we do. Again, let's delete this one. Did you know? Whatever the titles you want them to be. You have the option to change all of these images. I don't know whether you can see, but there is a fixed background image that we have within this section. And let me just show you that because it could be really beneficial for you. We're gonna choose a section, head to style, and you'll notice that there is a very subtle background image, but the attachment has now been fixed. So by fix, it's just gonna fix it in the position of the page and it gives it a nice parallax feel. Now I do have another video on my channel which explains a little bit more about uh, background images and different attachment types and actually how you can go about producing a very nice hero section for your website with all of the animation. So go and check that out. So moving on, I'm just gonna leave everything like this. And again, I don't want this section, so I'm just gonna delete it. And we're going to hit update. Let's hit preview. So there we go. You can see that the website is coming together quite nicely. We need to do a similar thing for our services page. So hit services. Let's edit it. Cool. There we go. So back to our blank canvas. Let's head over to Envato. View install kits. Now we need to choose a layout that represents our services. So let's see if there is one here. So we've got services two, or you have a single service. Uh, you can see that there are class options here as well if that was something you were looking to implement into your website. So for now, I'm just gonna click services two. All right, that went in really nice and easily. So delete that bit. Very similar process. I'm, I'm okay with how this is looking. But one thing I do want to do is I want to add a pricing table. Now, we can do this by clicking our plus button. And um, let's hit our Envato elements. Now, I'm looking to input a pricing table and we can either use our free blocks or I'm sure that this theme will have pricing table included. Here we go. So pricing, let's just insert that. Cool. So it has it has slotted it into the website and treated it like a page. So we do have this page title included here, but we can just quickly delete that. And now we have this pricing option included within our website. So it does look really cool. Uh, it's included the footer to the page as well, so we can just remove that like so. This section here, we can just change this text to red. So, and you can change the colors of these. You can go in, you can change the price, you can change the text. Anything you want to change, you can do using the editor to the left hand side. So, that's looking cool as well. I'm just going to click update, and that's going to publish our about our services page. Cool, same process. Let's preview changes. Cool, and finally, let's do exactly the same thing with our contact page and make it super quick. So, edit page. Edit with Elemental. Let's head to our 
theme kit. Cool, and we just need to find a simple contact page here. And there we go, let's just insert that for now. Cool, so that obviously says us, we can't see it because the theme isn't completely playing ball. So I'm just gonna make that to red. And I'm gonna delete that like we have done with every other page. And let's delete that one as well. So you can see this is looking awesome and it's taken no effort whatsoever. So let's just save this page now. Head to preview changes and we can start seeing how this site is coming around. So that looks great. Services. Again, everything is in there, looks great. About. Everything in there, again, looks awesome. And we have our homepage, like so. So this is looking really, really smart. Now, before we finish up, one thing I just wanna show you is how you go about adding the intro animations that you can see here. So. We can just directly edit this page via Elementor by heading up to the top and hitting this button. Now you'll notice that these have been sliding in and this slides in as well. So what we do is select the container, go to advanced, and then you'll see the option for motion effects. And this is fading into the left. Now you can fade in down, fade in right, you can even, you know, zoom in if you want to there's so many options and you can apply that to as many things on the page as you like you can apply it to entire sections you can apply it to columns and you can apply it to elements now i would recommend that you don't use this too heavily because it does turn into a little bit of overkill and it will start looking like an old style flash website if you know what that means or a wacky microsoft powerpoint presentation and i would absolutely avoid it just any animation that you use just keep it nice and smart clean and subtle now let's just update these changes and now what we need to do is finally we need to change our header and we need to change our footer now the way in which we do this is heading back to our wordpress dashboard and we can just go to exit the dashboard once we are met with this we need to head back up to the top left and just click the wordpress logo and here we are at our dashboard now to change the header and the footer we do this within our appearance settings so we go to appearance and customize cool so the first thing we need to implement here is changing our actual home page so if we head to home page settings we want to select it as a static page. Currently it's implementing it as a blog. We want it to be a static page and we want it to be our home page, like so. Now if you did have a post page or a blog on your website, then you would choose that page here. But in this situation, we don't actually have one, so I'm just gonna leave that blank. Now I'm gonna click this back arrow. Make sure you don't click the X because you're gonna lose all of your settings. So click the back arrow. Then we're gonna head to header. Now here we have a couple of options. We can choose site identity, and that is gonna allow us to select the logo. So click select logo, and it's gonna bring back up our image library. And you see that it's showing images from all of the images that have been imported with the template. And that's fine, they, they're there, they don't mean no harm. You can delete them or you can use them. But I do recommend changing all of the images to your own images making sure you're putting your own stamp on the site guys it's so important don't just don't just copy this don't just install the template and leave it because gonna, there's going to be so many other people using it and you need to stand out in order to beat the competition right so i'm just going to install the logo now i'm going to click and drag that in cool and within the alt text i'd recommend putting your logo name now this logo is just ultimate fitness it's just a completely random logo that I made up last week. And it's gonna ask us to crop it. I need to make sure that the cropping doesn't crop any of the image. Now you might be uploading a very large image that has loads of white space and you'll have the capability to crop it like so. Cool, so we can definitely see our logos in and it is huge, so we need to change the width. There we go. Now scrolling down, we need to remove display site title. And once that's removed, 
we can see that our logo looks a bit smaller so I'm just going to drag that up a little bit more you can make your logo as, as large as you like I suppose and that's pretty much it for this section so head back remember back arrow and then we're going to go back again now from here we're going to head down to footer I'm going to hit footer bar and you can see that if we scroll down within our preview option here we have content here so currently it says copyright and it's got the C icon and it's pulling in our current year which is awesome because we need to make sure that that is always up to date and it's also pulling in our site title and now you can get powered by theme author you can just delete that I don't think we need it in there and there you go it looks much tidier so you can put whatever you want in here now this is a very basic navigation it's a basic website and we've managed to achieve this completely free we haven't had to pay for anything apart from our website hosting the elemental plugin has been free the theme has been free and all it takes is a little bit of time to invest in learning and how this works and swapping out some of the content to make it your own once we've done within our customizer you need to make sure that we save these changes so let's head up to the top here and we're just going to publish all of the changes that we've made like so and then we can close cool so let's have a look at what our site is looking like we can head back here for the final time and there you have it we have buttons that look cool on hover we have a nice hero image we've got scrolling effects coming in you've got the ability to change anything that you want on this page and just make it your own and we have obviously our website links at the top they're linking to other pages so Guys, this is a fully working website here and it looks amazing. So yeah, I do recommend that you go in, spend a little bit of time with Elementor and have a play and make the website your own. So there you go guys, hopefully you found it really valuable. So just to recap, we have sorted out the website hosting and found your domain name. We have installed WordPress, we've installed Elementor and I've shown you how you go about using it for your own website. And also we have installed and customized our theme for our personal trainer or gym website. There are loads of videos on this channel that are designed to help you up your website design game and improve your business, so make sure you go and check them out. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification because you'll then be notified of future releases. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because actually it helps other people find my content as well and I would actually really appreciate it. So that's it for now guys and I'll catch you in the next one.